Hello there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's fairly new because I've been wanting to do this for a while and have worked up my blog in the meantime, and finally here it is. My name is Deepa Robbins, and I'm just going to use this opportunity to show you the different types of projects I make, which include scrapbooks, scrapbook pages, and cards. Today I'm going to be focusing on this card right here. Um, I got the idea from viewing different YouTube tutorials, and this one mainly came from Prairie Ink and Paper. I thought her idea was pretty cool, so I tried to do it myself and sort of add my own touch to it. Now, the stamps that I'm going to be using today, um, first of all, is the Simon Says Stamp Elizabeth Background Stamp. This is a really nice stamp set because you could use the whole stamp by itself, or you could use parts of the stamp and cut it out and do whatever you want with it. So I think that's a really cool stamp to be using. Um, the next set I'm going to be using is Alta News Vintage Roses stamp set. This is a really versatile stamp set because there are so many stamp images here. As you can see, there's so many floral images and on top of that, there are so many leaf images so you can build and create exactly what you want from it. The next stamp set I'm going to be using is the W plus nine Hellebore Builder. This one is a beautiful stamp set when layered together. And once again, it's a builder set. So you can, like I said, create a little background, a big background, do whatever you want with it. I just think it's really beautiful and great to pair with the alternate set. Now let's talk cardstock. Well, I just wanna first off say that here in Canada, the Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound that everyone seems to use in the US is like, super expensive so i actually stick to the nina exact index 90 pound card stock which is about 30 dollars per pack 250 sheets and that's what i'm going to be using here so i'm going to stick that into my misty and i'm going to get my stamps ready to do my first set of stamping now the first thing i want to do is look up the guide for the hellebore builder they have all of these online and it's pretty simple to go and look them up and find exactly what you need in order to line up your stamps so as you can see, I'm stamping here the first layer of the Hellebore flower with frosty red Alta New ink. And I'm making sure to line up my second layer very well. This is why I'm using the Misty because I like making sure that my layered stamping comes out really good. So I'll get that in my Misty there. And the next color ink that I'm gonna be using is another Alta New ink. This one's Coral Berry. It's a really nice pinky red. Um, all of these inks come from the uh, Red Sunset ink collection from Alta New. Now this last color is Crimson. And after this, what I'm going to do is stamp the little centers of the flower. Now there's two layers for the center. And I'm going to be using Paper Bag, which is another Alta New ink for the larger portion of the center. And this time I'm just gonna use my acrylic block. I don't really need to position that stamp that perfectly because it has a bit of um, leeway in how you stamp it. The second layer of the center is gonna be done with dark chocolate, Alta New ink. And here I'm just speeding it up for you. I'm stamping another Hellebore flower, and this time I'm using Hero Arts Unicorn Pigment Ink. This is a nice white pigment ink. And as you can see, I'm using my cloth to wipe it off, and I'm sort of showing you this Ranger Ink Essentials water-based stamp cleaner. It's a really cool cleaner, and I recommend getting it because it just smells so nice. It's got a bubblegum scent, and it doesn't just stink like all the other ones do. Now my next layer here is using the Hero Arts Unicorn Pastel Peach. So this is in the same line as those of those unicorn pigment inks, but it's a peachy color, which is really nice. The third layer, layer is being done with Alta New Sunkissed. This is part of the warm and cozy um, ink set line. And I didn't happen to mention the reds were all from the Red Sunset ink set from Alta New. Now, I think what I decided here was to do the centers with caramel toffee and paper bag. So you can see those two being stamped there once again with the acrylic block. And here's our final product. Looks really nice. It's a really nice cartoony type, realistic type, but I don't even know how to explain it, but a really nice floral. 
Now, even though I stamped those centers, I actually changed my mind and decided to add a bit of sheen. So I added Ranger Gold Embossing Powder to the centers in order to give it that little bit of shine. And as you can see here, looks pretty cool, huh? So I'm making sure I use my anti-static tool there just to make sure that the uh, embossing powder doesn't go all over the place. And finally, you can see that I'm using this Swiffer um, wipe basically to get rid of all those little pieces of powder that are stuck on your cardstock there. Finally, I'm gonna cut out the images. I don't have the dies, so I had to fussy cut them. And there's my product. Now I decided I wanted to add those all to new florals. So here's me stamping those out again. Um, my first layer this time was the unicorn pastel peach. And I'm drawing each layer in between because it is a pigment ink. You want to make sure that you're not causing blurring between the two layers. So that's why heat setting is very important. So here I'm lining up the next layer. And this layer is going to be done with Sunkist, the Altenew ink there. And I'll continue with their warm and cozy line doing each layer. The third layer here, I'm going to be using the orange cream, which is the next one in line. And for the fourth layer, I only have that on one of those flowers there. I'm going to be using the Autumn Blaze. And there you have it. Those are the two flowers that you get. Now what I'm going to do is stamp out some leaves. And for this, I'm using the acrylic uh, blocks because it's just easier and I don't need to position them so perfectly. The first layer I did with the Minty Mint, uh, Altenew Minty Mint. And the second layer, I'm just sort of inking up the edges with Altenew Sweet Leaf because there is no second layer to this. So this kind of gives it um, a faded look between two colors without having the double layers, which is actually pretty cool. So you don't even have to have layering inks to do this sort of stuff. Sorry, layering stamps. Now here are a couple more leaf images from the Hellebore set. That original leaf image was from the Vintage Roses. And I'm using the same thing again. I'm using the Altenew Minty Mint for the bottom layer. And I'm using the Altenew Sweet Leaf for the second layer. These are from the Green Meadows ink set from Altenew, which is a newer ink set which is really nice it's got a softer set of greens which I recommend getting so I'm stamping the second layer here of that hellebore leaf and sorry about my head getting in the way there but that just shows you that it helps to view it right on from the top to make sure that you're getting it from the top and layering it exactly so now the next thing I'm gonna do is a little unconventional um, first of all, I'm going to be cutting those out and getting all my little pieces. But since I don't have the dies, what I want to show you is how I cut out the centers here. You're going to get parts that are there with no stamping on it that the die would normally cut out. So here I'm using a very sharp X-Acto knife to cut out the centers just like a die would. This way it sort of looks like a die cut, but it actually isn't. You've just fussy cut it all. Now I'm going to go to my card background. Um, I used a gray type cardstock. This is a Recollections color, so it doesn't actually give me a color name. Something I picked up from Michaels. I'm going to use that Elizabeth um, stamp set to sort of stamp off the edge. I'm kind of deciding where I want to put it, but I guess the first thing I have to do is cut my cardstock to the size that I want it. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now I don't actually measure exactly specific card sizes. I just kind of cut the paper in half. So this is a normal eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. So that is now eight and a half by 5.5 inches, both sides of it. So what I'm going to do is just use one half of it. And I'm going to end up stamping that Elizabeth stamp on the background. Here, I'm just sort of lining it up and kind of deciding exactly where I want to put it. Like I said, this is a really nice stamp set and I recommend getting it from Simon Says Stamp. It's, it's one of the different looking ones as the rest of them are pretty much square. So this one gives you a bit of a different look. Now, once again, I'm gonna be using the Hero Arts Hero Hues uh, Unicorn Pigmenting. I'm just gonna make sure that I get it all over the stamp. 
and I'm not going to use a stamp positioner. Like I've got it over backwards and I'm going to just apply the paper, the cardstock to the top of it. And so now that I've got it nice and juicy with my ink, I'm going to add my paper to the top, but a little off the edge. I don't want to have it like right in the center. So here I'm sort of positioning it. I don't even know why I flipped the paper like that. I don't know why it even matters. But anyways, there I go, finally positioning it on top and adding pressure. And I'm actually adding a scratch piece of paper. I see so many other video tutorials doing this. So I was like, hey, let's not try it out. And in my case, I wanted to take it up a notch and add something else. So I brought in a brayer. So I tried to use that to add even pressure. But instead what happened is on the edges, it sort of touched the edge of the stamp and I got extra markings of the unicorn ink that I didn't want, which aren't a part of the stamp. So I'll show you how I correct that in a minute, but here is what I got. And it's very important to heat set this because as I said, it's pigment ink. It's going to take a little longer to dry. You don't want to mess with it and smudge it up before you actually get to, you know, put it on your background. Now here are the little pieces that I was showing you where I was getting little marks of ink. Here's a Tombow Mono, mono um, Sand Eraser, and hopefully that's going to get rid of it. So I'm erasing those bits, and it seems to be working well, especially because the unicorn ink tends to smudge because it's pigment, so it comes off a little easier than, say, a dye ink, which would soak into the paper. And it's also important to note that I did dry that ahead of time because those little eraser pieces could have got stuck on the pigment ink. Now... The next step is to stamp the same stamp, but I'm putting it on a smaller piece of cardstock and using Versamark ink because I want to emboss it in a different color so it sort of stands out on top of the original stamp. I'll show you exactly what I mean here. It might be a bit confusing right now, but just go with it. So this time I'm not using the scratch piece of paper because I don't want to ruin my image. I'm just using the brayer a little bit and quickly pulling that off being careful not to smudge the image as I pull it off. I actually don't show you that here, but I did do this twice. This is the second time around. The first time I smudged it up a bit and, and the powder just didn't sit well. It looked like a smudged image. So I redid it. Now this is Ranger Rose Gold Embossing Powder. It is really nice. I recommend getting this. I don't have like all the rose golds to compare it to, but I would say this is one of the better ones. However, I will note that the powder is not like one size. It's got a bit of big granules and some finer granules. And it's a little harder to work with in that you might have to emboss twice sometimes for sentiments. For this, obviously, it's an intricate background, so I'm only going to be doing it once. But it's important to cover it maybe a few times with your um, powder to make sure that the ink picks up the powder because sometimes bigger granules may just fall off of it. So here I am heat setting it with the Ranger um, heat gun. Another important point to note, I love the Ranger heat gun. It's really good. I used to use a different one and it just never gave me the same results that the Ranger one does. This one is very, it gets hot really quickly and it gives you really good results when you do heat your um, cardstock without burning the paper. You do have to be careful to waft it around so that it's not in one spot for too long, but it does pretty well. And I definitely do recommend it over anything else. So there you go. There's that nice rose gold sheen. Now the next thing I'm going to do is cut this out. I've sped this up so it doesn't take so long, but I'm cutting out the center star from that image. It's like a five point star. And I'm being careful to cut right up against the edges so that I don't have any border along the edge because it'll just continue the rest of the stamp. So there you have the star that I'm going to be using to prop up on top of the background. Next, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. This is from the W plus 9 Kind Soul Stamp Set. It's the Hello Sentiment. I'm using VersaFine uh, embossing ink here because I'm going to be heat embossing again. I'm going to be using the Ranger Rose Gold Embossing Powder. Again, just to sort of tie it into the background to create a more fluid card. It's important to note again here, as I said before, you have larger granules and smaller granules. 
and powder like granules in this uh, embossing powder so sometimes you will have to emboss twice and in this case I did uh, I can't remember here if I show you or not but I do stamp this twice with the uh, Ranger ink I'm sorry with the <laughs> um, VersaFine ink and um, add my powder and then heat it again just to get a s more solid image especially since this is a sentiment sentiment you want it to stand out a little more so there you go now I'm gonna cut down my card background because I felt that that was a little too much of the background I sort of want it to sit off of the edge so since I'm cutting it smaller what I'm gonna end up doing is having a little bit of a white strip on of the back of the card base showing through the front but you'll see how that looks in the end and I'm pretty sure you can remember from the initial picture of the photo I mean sorry picture of the card here I'm now propping up that star with square foam pieces and that's how I'm gonna add it to the front here so there are my foam squares and I just basically put them like one at each point and then sort of all over to give it some um, oomph so that it actually stays in place and stays propped up so here I am adhering it to the back there and as you can see it makes a really nice contrast and focuses you on that center uh, I've sped this up again so that it's not taking so long and there's my sentiment I cut that little flag shape out because everyone seems to be doing that and I thought it looks cool <laughs> so I cut that out there and now I'm adding my florals as you can see I'm not adding all of them because I felt I had too many but I can always use it for another project I always like to use my dot I'm uh, sorry my tape runner to put on my pieces first and then any parts that I do want stuck up or that are at the parts where they should be lifted up I put on afterwards as you can see here and there you go now I'm going to do the same thing with my sentiment I'm going to prop it up to keep that dimension going and I'll add it here and then what I'm going to do is cut that down to size there was too much gray at the bottom so I figured I'd make it a little smaller as I said I sort of cut my card to size at the end I don't really follow any specific you know a to a whatever size of card so this is just a random size of card piece so I'm sorry I can't really give you the dimensions now as you can see here because I do that I have to sort of mark exactly where I want my center and my top and I use those little guidelines to double up the sides so I know where, how to get the fold and that's how I cut my paper so now I'm cutting it and I'm also using my cutter to do my scoring which I find really helpful because I don't need a scoreboard <laughs> a little tip there so here I'm using my tape runner again to adhere the front of my card to the card base and I'm just gonna cut off any little edges and there you have it there's my card great now I'm actually gonna be um, doing the inside of this card and I'll post that video afterwards but here's my final product I did add some nouveau drops there in different colors I think I used autumn red berry um, oh, I can't remember the pink color and the orange one is carved pumpkin or something like that I'm so sorry I don't have the right names and then I added a couple little pearl dots to the center of the flowers so if you like my video please subscribe press the little button below and hopefully I'll have more videos for you soon particularly the decorating the inside of this card if you have a chance please visit my blog here at designsbyd.blogspot.ca and hope you guys have a nice day bye